Hi, welcome to Makeup and Monarchies. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany. I am a cosmetologist, hairstylist, makeup artist, and lover of all things UK history. This week, it's been a while for me, so bear with me. Just, it's been a crazy month and I'm hoping that things pick up from here on out or get better. Um, anyways, this week we're going to be talking about hair in the medieval times, in medieval, ing like in the medieval period. I found this very interesting because I do hair. So to learn the things I did, I was like, this is so cool. If you're new here, please, if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe and leave a comment down below because that really helps with the algorithm. I am trying a new lip today that I have on. Now I'm going to tell you right now, I wanted this. I'm going to, you're gonna hear this again. I wanted this last year. It sold out really quickly. I was really upset, but it came out again. It is the Dior sequin lip and the shade. They're like their signature shade. I think it's 999. I hate when people overreact when they like try something on. So I never, ever, ever do that. I did it today because I was really like was shocked. This stuff is the bomb. It is so good. I'm, I want to see how long it lasts. So there's a whole thing on how to get it to sparkle. You're gonna, you'll see how you do it. And uh, also, I'm going to change shirts in a second, or you're going to see me in a different shirt. And that's because I cannot be trusted to put makeup on wearing a white shirt. So to save myself and this sweatshirt, I wore a different one. So in case you're wondering why, with all of that being said, let's just get into it. Hello. I am just starting this out by saying I, winter's here and my eczema has come back. So if somebody wants to come up with a, um, immunization for that, that would be fucking wonderful. Anyways, so we are doing hair, as I just explained, and I probably have a different shirt on in the intro because I cannot be trusted to put makeup on with white, a white shirt on because I'm a five-year-old and anyways, we're going to talk about hair in the medieval times if I can find what I'm looking for because I was like, you know what, let's, let's talk about that because that interests the hell out of me. So as you can see, my tan on my hands is far different than my face. Oh, anyways. So in medieval times, pe most people didn't really care about their hair, which is far different than now. I do hair for a living, so as well as makeup, but I, people care about their hair. It's part of, if you've ever seen that show, I forget what it is. I'll put it in the, right here. There's one scene where she said, hair is everything and I get it but then he says no it's not and kind of true but anyways so I'm gonna go over the different like different aspects of hair so cutting styling coloring which shocked the hell out of me I did not think that they did that but they did and it wasn't for the same reasons that we do now but I like to cover gray so let's talk about it. So I'm gonna kind of go through the steps here, like doing this video as I would as if I was doing a service at the salon, only because that is routine for me and um, <laughs> it's just the flow of the day for me. So we're gonna talk about color first because obviously if you're getting your hair colored, that's what we're gonna be doing first, not cutting. So let's start off with the basics. The three, the three main color families are blonde, red, and brown, brunette. Within those families, there are varying shades of each one of those colors. So we have like lightest light blonde. For me, that would be a level 10. I'm just talking hair world. That would be a level 10. Uh, we have like dirty blonde, copper, auburn, medium brown, darkest dark brown are just some examples. And no, the color hair color black, which is actually not a color at all. It is just the absence, uh, abs, absence whatever. It just means there's no color in it. I can't talk today. <clears throat> black hair, black hair, not brown, not dark. Black hair does not exist in nature. Like it's not an actual natural hair color. What we see as a black hair color naturally is actually, it would fall under darkest dark brown, but you can always color it black, which would be a level one. But naturally, the darkest natural level is going to be a level two, which is just a step above black. But it is the, in my world on a color wheel, it is called darkest dark brown. So back then, blonde and brunette were the optimal hair colors. 
surprisingly, oh, there it is. Surprisingly, even in medieval times, women dyed, colored their hair and men were known to color their beards. I don't say dye because you don't dye hair. You color it. It's a little insight to our world. Also, we don't use bleach. We use lightener. So it's totally different. It's not, but it is. It is what it is. Moving on. There are a number of different recipes for hair dye that have been documented. So one of the recipes is, I'm actually, and side note, before I get into it, I'm actually doing a really subtle eye look, focusing on a wig liner because I finally, finally got my hands on the Dior sequin lipstick that came out last year. And by the time I saw it, it, it had already been like sold out everywhere. So it did come out, I did get it. I can't wait to fucking use it. I wanted this for like since last Christmas. Cause I was like, that would be such a beautiful Christmas lipstick. So one, or it's actually like two different recipes for hair color back then. So for the first one, the hair when washed with lye made of, oh no, that's the wrong color, made of ashes of the barberry tree and water will make it turn yellow. So then we're going to get blonde. To color the hair also, this is another one, to color the hair yellow, honey and white wine left overnight on the hair with a mixture of calendine root, olive matter, oil of cumin seeds, box shavings, and saffron was recommended. Wash off after 24 hours, which now I'm like, I want to go grab a mannequin somewhere and do that to it and see if it works. Black hair might be achieved with gal oak, and that's G-A-L-L, -L, coals of burned gals being quenched in wine or vinegar, the leaves of bramble boiled in rye. And that, that's one recipe. Another recipe involves a mixture of iron, gal nuts, and alum boiled in vinegar and left on the head for two days. So we were talking in the salon about this and we think it's the vinegar that's like the driver. So a driver would be the developer you mix with, with a color to open the cuticle up. So we're thinking because that's acidic, vinegar is acidic, that that is what's gonna open the cuticle and make the hair molecules shift to color. So I thought that was cool and I probably would do that if I had all those ingredients. So next we're gonna get into cutting. I'm gonna jump off and do my liner real quick and I'll be right back. So cutting, how often did people cut their hair in the Middle Ages? Probably a lot more than you would think. Long hair got in the way, which if you have long hair, you know this. The only people who generally had long hair were the were like the higher up people like nobility um they didn't need to work so it didn't get in the way but lords and ladies often paid others to wash their hair for them which people still do in between washes perfumed oils would keep the hair from smelling bad and flaxseed oil worked as a hair gel so funny enough sometimes you will see that they're is oh that's gonna drip see this is why i didn't wear the white you'll see flaxseed oil in hair products so uh the fact that they were using it back then that just is so interesting to me so cutting was used with with shears like we do now i would assume not exactly the same kind but scissors i call mine shears but probably scissors that they had or I mean in a pinch I'm sure you could use a sword. So moving on to styling during the middle ages or medieval um, long hair and beards stayed fashionable due to its popularity with European nobility. Knights often sported a long flowing hair locks which were usually tucked into their helmets. Most men during this time wore hats or clips in their hair as well long hair was a symbol of masculinity for men which is not the case i i love hair so any hair i bald i don't care it doesn't bother me but uh glad it's still in style and i will say this too my 13 year old son has long hair and i'm glad he does he's always had it long and he loves it and he doesn't give a shit about what anybody thinks and i'm so here for it around 400 to 1100 women wore their hair loose but 
covered. And with the coming of Christianity, married women, oh, let me work on this, were expected to cover all their hair under a veil, loose shoulder cape or kerchief, like when they were out in public. This style stayed true to all classes of women. I've always wondered why hair was seen as like, why oh, you had to cover it, it's just odd to me. During this time, hair wasn't always completely covered. Women of royalty or aristocracy would wear two long lengths of hair that were braided with ribbon or loose lengths that were bound through the hair. Hold on, I'm not, I just started using these things and I'm not sure how I feel about them, but. We're doing it anyway. Sometimes they extended the braids to the ground by weaving in false hair, which is done now too, which I love that look when it's a fashion color. The headdress would typically be a circlet over the veil, over a veil or a crown with or without a veil. So that was actually, you know who where we can see that? I'll put this picture in. This is from the movie Braveheart, which I know is not very historically accurate at all, but this is a good depiction of what this is talking about. Young girls during the 12th century would also wear loose flowing hair accompanied with a wreath or a chaplet of flowers. Hair was also worn loose and flowing by queens for state occasions. A queen's headdress would be her crown with or without a light veil. What the fuck did I put my hand in? Cornets were often the name that was given to the style where the hair is plaited or braided and raised up onto the temples into horn-like shapes. So we've seen that a few times in like portraits or pictures or uh, movies, whatever. Around the 13th century, the ram's horn hairstyle became very popular. So this was created by parting the hair down the center and coiling the hair around the ears into a scroll that looked like a ram's horn. So that brings me to like almost Princess Leia looking. And I wonder if that's where they got that hairstyle from portraits. In the late 14th century, fashionable women no longer covered their necks and chins, prefer, and they preferred to wear a veil with a narrow fillet. Married women still wore their hair plaited, braided, and wound closely around their head covered by a veil or a wimple when in public. Hairnets were known and extensively used during medieval times as a way of restraining a woman's hair. A hairnet would be used in conjunction with many of the beautiful medieval hair pieces. They were almost always worn under some kind of a veil. During the Renaissance, the hairnets known as the, sno the snood, I'm gonna put the spelling snod, was worn alone. This, it tended to be less fine and often set with jewels. During a har during a large portion of the medieval, medieval period, bleh, beautiful women emphasized uh, her high round forehead. If a woman was unfortunate to have been naturally cursed with a low hairline, the correct and fashionable look was artificially enhanced by plucking the hairline back towards the crown of the head. So um, you would think the crown is here. It's not, it's back here. So they would come back further. This look was accentuated by reducing the eyebrows to a barely there line. So think early 2000s when we all plucked the shit out of our brows and we had just very thin lines and now we all regret it because that's not the style anymore. Now, if we look at the pit, portrait of Elizabeth Woodville, my favorite, we see that she modeled this style. Near the end of the 12th century, women stopped wearing long braids or plates. They took the fashion or they started doing the fashion of hiding their hair once. They started they started wearing their hair and covering it with a wimple again. It would that would hide all the hair and cover the neck completely and was often worn with a circlet. So I will Enter that here. The barbette worn in the later part of the century was a band of linen that encircled the face and pinned on top of the head. It was worn with a light veil by noble women and worn alone by all classes with their hair braided at the back of the head. Young girls would often wear the barbette with a full, it's 
spelt F-I-L-L-E-T. Fillette, if I'm wrong, comment below and tell me. Which was a stiffened band of linen or silk, similar to a circlet, and could be as wide as four inches, and it resembled a hat. I am going to jump off and do my mascara. I'll be right back. Another part of the style was if you were single, um, if the hair was up and covered, it means you were married. If your hair was down, you were single and ready to mingle. So I'm going to talk about Tudor hairstyles for a second. They wore their hair very long, but it was generally hidden under a headpiece of some type. So we've seen like Anne Boleyn had the French hood. Um, some... Some, so I'm going to talk about Tudor hairstyles for a second. They wore their hair very long, but it was generally hidden under a headpiece of some type. So we've seen like Anne Boleyn had the French hood. Some of the rare occasions when it was accepted for a woman to wear her hair down were on their wedding day to show the bride's virginity and the at her coronation, the queen or queen consort, which Elizabeth I did. It was noted that at Anne Boleyn's coronation, her hair was so long that she could sit on it, which is crazy long. It's time for a trim, girl. Wigs and hair pieces became popular as well, and Elizabeth I was said to own over 80 wigs, periwigs and hair pieces. I know she was wearing that a lot in her later years, and Mary, Queen of Scots, wore that, wore a headpiece as well, or a wig, um, because after her fusion, they held her head up and her head fell off the wig. Poor girl. When wearing a headdress, the like long hair was generally generally put into a bun or pinned up to fit within the piece and be hidden. The only part of a woman's hair that could be seen was the front, so that would be like the bang area, the fringe area, and the sides. There are a few times when they wore a gable hood and no hair was showing at all. Okay, so I'm done curling my hair. I'm gonna let these curls cool down and then I'm gonna run my fingers through them. Um, I'm going to apply this and then when you use this to get the sequin look, you have to wait five minutes. So you have to like let it sit, put it on, let it sit, wait five minutes and then and then it'll be sequiny. So we'll see how good it works. But I will give you a little spoiler because I did open this already. And like we've seen with other lips liquid lipsticks or lip glosses everybody's doing this doe foot now where it's got like a little so you can see a little hole in the applicator to hold more product so i'm, I'm happy everybody's doing that because it's kind of annoying when it, has, it runs out but anyways before we get to that i am going to we're going to talk about tools so tools for hair hair brushes as we know them now didn't exist then i hate my phone i need a new one instead combs were used the material material that they were made from varied depending on the wealth of the person that was getting it combs could be largely decorative and made of costly materials like ivory or they were made with more humble materials like bone or antler for the most part they were shaped shaped like the combs that we have now Please hold, I have one. This is a detangling comb, but so like this. I'm gonna cover the name because, because. Although some folded out to be more of an X shape, vastly different from what we have for combs now. All right, I am going to apply this and then we are going to wait five minutes and then I'm going to also put on some black liner inside my waterline and add some skin do to the inside corners of my eyes just to give it a little bit of brightness but here we go wish me luck because it's red oh the applicator is nice and it's really like silky once this is on i'm going to start talking so that we can i can let it sit for the five So it's been five minutes. 
I added my liner and my skin due to the inside of my eyes. I'm going to see if this works. And if it does, I'm going to be in love. So that wine sucks. <gasps> Whoa, I don't do that typically. Ooh, okay. Okay. I'm going to just do a little bit of cleanup work there. I didn't think that was going to work that way. So I am utterly stunned. Woo. I love this. So this is a liquid lipstick. I'm sorry for the noise. I want to see how long this lasts. So it is, right now, it's 12-12. Uh, let's see how long. Anyways, so that's it for today's episode. I'm overly impressed with this lipstick. I fucking love this. I don't ever react like that either. That's so cool. Okay, I love. Anyways, so... I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope it was educational for you because it was for me and I do hair. So to learn all these things about coloring back then uh, was so cool. So if you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment below. And yeah, all the things, let's do all the things. You can find me over on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, same name, Makeup and Monarchies. And I think that's it. Uh, if you enjoy my videos and you'd like to help support me, you can head on over to buymecoffee.com forward slash Makeup and Monarchies and buy me coffee. So I have a severe Starbucks addiction. So that would really, really help me out. Also fun fact, Starbucks, your birthday reward, if you're in that whole thing, is only good it comes out on your birthday and is only good for your birthday. So can we change that? Because it's bullshit. Because not always, not all of us can get there on our fucking birthday, Starbucks, okay? Up your game. Anyways, that's it for this week. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye.